Have you ever thought about the real reason why SpongeBob blows bubbles? Nothing soothes one's frazzled nerves like blowing bubbles. Is SpongeBob a pack a day smoker? Brother, what are you talking about? SpongeBob is no smoker. Okay, Mr. Catman, I'm about to show you proof not only showing SpongeBob as a pack a day smoker, but how he also peer pressures his friends into smoking. You will never convince me. I want to start this theory with the Bubble Stand episode. Bubble Stand is the second episode of the series and the first to include bubble blowing. The episode starts with Spongebob stepping out of his house and soaking up the morning vibes in Bikini Bottom. The guy just loves peace, but then out of nowhere, he decides to build a bubble stand right in front of his house. He starts hammering away, making all this noise, and who do you think gets annoyed? Can we lower the volume, please? Squidward's trying to play his clarinet and Spongebob's racket is totally messing up with his groove. He sticks his head out the window all grumpy and tells Spongebob to cut it out. Spongebob, being the good neighbor, tones it down a bit and then he finishes up his stand really fast when Squidward isn't looking. Now that Spongebob's got his stand up where you can blow bubbles for 25 cents, Patrick comes along and in typical Patrick style, he's got no cash. So he borrows a quarter from Spongebob to blow a bubble. But here's the kicker, Patrick can't blow a bubble to save save his life. Spongebob sees this as a business opportunity and offers to teach him for another quarter which of course he also has to borrow from Spongebob. Hey Sponge, can I borrow another quarter? Thanks. Spongebob shows Patrick this wild bubble blowing technique. It's all over the top with spinning around, double takes, pelvic thrusts, you name it. And dude, Spongebob blows this giant elephant shaped bubble. It's massive and it ends up floating over to Squidward's house and popping there. Squidward is pissed. He comes out all huffy asking how can they possibly be so loud just blowing bubbles. Spongebob tries to explain it's all about the technique, but Squidward isn't buying it. He thinks it's all dumb. Spongebob and Patrick then get sad and leave, but Squidward, you know he's got this curiosity. He picks up the bubble wand and starts trying to blow a bubble. Now here's the funny part, Spongebob pops up out of nowhere and tells Squidward he's gotta pay 25 cents to blow a bubble. That'll be 25 cents, sir. Ah, whoa, wow. Squid ends up paying anyways, and he tries to blow a bubble, but nothing happens. SpongeBob and Patrick keep telling him about the technique, but Squidward is just getting more and more frustrated. Finally, Squidward does this mock version of SpongeBob's technique, screaming into the wand. And dude, he blows this giant bubble. It's so big, it lifts his entire house off the ground, and Patrick and SpongeBob are just cheering him on, thinking Squidward is a bubble blowing genius. But then, as the giant bubble he blew lifts his house higher and higher into the air, Spongebob and Patrick are freaking out, trying to get his attention. When Squidward finally looks outside, he realizes he's all the way up in the sky. Then the bubble pops and his house finally comes crashing down. Now I really don't even know where to start here so to make it easier let's rewind a little bit cause there's a lot to break down here. Looking at blowing bubbles through the lens of smoking cigarettes, things really start to make sense. First off, this episode came out in 1999. The average pack of cigarettes was $3.94, with each pack bringing 20 individual cigarettes. This means if you bought a pack, sold the cigarettes individually for 25 cents just like Spongebob, you'd make about a 6 cent profit per cigarette you sell. Spongebob saw a business opportunity and a huge gap in the market with no one knowing how to blow bubbles. Not only did Spongebob become the biggest influence for Patrick to start blowing bubbles, but he is outright profiting from something that can literally kill you. When Squid's left alone and he he finds the bubbles, his curiosity gets the best of him. And here's the thing, the thrill of breaking rules can be appealing, especially to teenagers. Now I'm not saying Squid's a teenager, but a lot of smokers start smoking when they're young, and this scene almost embodies a curious kid who sees his parents smoking all the time, finding the pack of smoke, and again, letting his curiosity get the best of him. I don't know. Sounds like a reach to me. What? Spongebob is literally... He's literally selling cigarettes. I think my boy Spongebob is just trying to vibe with his homies. I'm going to need more evidence than this. Okay, what about this episode? And whatever happened to Spongebob, Spongebob has one of those days where everything just goes wrong. You kind of know how it is, right? He accidentally messes up big time with his friends. He breaks Gary's shell, ruins Patrick's cake for his mom, wakes up Squid, destroys Sandy's robot, and even deep fries Mr. Krabs. Everyone starts calling him Idiot Boy and Spongebob is totally heartbroken. Feeling like nobody wants him around, he decides to leave Bikini Bottom. And it's super sad, man. He 
literally thinks he lost all of his friends. So SpongeBob wanders off and ends up getting amnesia after a fall. He forgets everything about himself and becomes this guy called Cheesehead Brown Pants. I mean, what a name, right? Now, here's the crazy part. He's in New Kelp City. He's roaming around completely clueless about who he is. It's like one of those weird dreams where nothing makes sense, you know? He's wandering around trying to find some kind of job. He's feeling really low, thinking he's pretty much a jobless deadbeat. Like imagine SpongeBob, the always happy bubble blowing sponge we all know, now just totally lost and down in his luck. But then this happens. You guys mind if I bubble? The reason why these guys are freaking out, I'll get to in a moment. But what I really want to talk about is, if SpongeBob lost his memory, how would he even know to want to blow bubbles? Guys, that's because SpongeBob is a pack of day smoker. I mean, think about it. He's lost his memory, but deep down, the urge to blow bubbles is still there. It's ingrained in him. It's like a muscle memory or a deeply rooted habit that he just can't shake off, even when he has no idea who he is anymore. Now, would you please approve my theory, Mr. Catman? Your theory is not valid. What? Yep. Dude. Chill out, bro. SpongeBob is literally a pack a day smoker. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. Okay, another episode. Burst your bubbles. So the episode kicks off with SpongeBob struggling big time with his driving. Mrs. Puff is freaking out. And let me just say, they're actually on the road. They're not even at the driving school. But anyways, with all of this happening, SpongeBob has an idea. Nothing soothes one's frazzled nerves like blowing bubbles. <sighs> okay, so does the theory make sense now? Nah. Bro, what are you talking about? SpongeBob literally says nothing soothes one's frazzled nerves like blowing bubbles. Maybe bro just likes blowing bubbles. Okay, what about this? After SpongeBob crashes, Mrs. Puff loses it, tells SpongeBob he's never getting his license and kicks him out the boat. After this, SpongeBob gets really sad. He sees everyone with a car, even Patrick. Patrick! But then the next scene is literally him in the back of his house smoking. I mean, blowing bubbles. Like an addict. Hmm, okay. I'm kind of starting to see what you're saying, young mustard, but I'm going to need more evidence before I make my final decision. Okay, what about Little Yellow Book? It's an episode that starts off pretty chill at the Krusty Krab. Squid is just kicking back, relaxing, you know. But then, as usual, chaos erupts when a bunch of customers roll in and SpongeBob is nowhere to be found. Squid starts freaking out because nobody's cooking, right? And he finally finds SpongeBob hiding in a barrel, writing in this little book. It turns out SpongeBob is actually taking notes in his work diary. So Squidward, as curious as he is, he starts reading SpongeBob's diary out loud to everyone at the Krusty Krab. Totally not cool, right? It gets crazy when SpongeBob finds out. Dude is totally heartbroken, runs out and starts crying, and everyone gets super mad at Squidward for being such a jerk. It's like the whole town is against him. Even Mr. Krab is like, dude, you need to apologize. But Squidward, he's just not feeling any remorse. But here's where it gets interesting. So Squidward's life starts going downhill big time. He loses his house, and up sleeping in a bench and then the cops put him in socks like in medieval times even patrick comes by and just lets him have it throwing tomatoes at him and everything now what is spongebob doing in the midst of all this spongebob is just totally embarrassed and humiliated right so he's like i have to take my break and dashes out i think this scene is the nail in the coffin for this theory i might as well title this theory a fact Okay, yeah, your theory is valid. Wow, really? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Catman. Anytime. Anyways, that's a wrap on our deep dive into the bubble theory. SpongeBob, as a closet smoker with his bubble blowing standing in for lighting up a cigarette, is a theory that adds a whole new layer to the underwater antics of Bikini Bottom. Last thing I want to bring up though before wrapping up this theory, I just want to point out how all the cars or boats, whatever, in the show, their mufflers have bubbles coming out. And in the real world, what do we have? Smoke. Bro, I already told you your theory is valid. Can you just please end it? Mr. Catman, you need to shut up. I'm about to do an outro right now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Hurry the f up. So as we say goodbye, keep this quirky theory in mind next time you watch SpongeBob and let me know if there's any other scenes I missed. And with all that being said, I will see you guys in the next one.